to statistics so today's session will be moving towards to understand the theorem now onwards so now onwards we'll be going with the understand the which type of theorems mostly we use to do the data analytics with the help of your statistics because whenever you go with the statistic or probability concept in a data analytics theorem play a variety or theorem play a vital role in that as well as some of the test cases so today we'll be going towards the think of your bias theorem if you observe i just put one statement here before going to the syntax or before going with the formula just try to understand what do you mean by your bias theorem basically this is a one of your theory of your probability or statistic we call this is bias theorem or alternatively we can call as a bias law rule on recently we can call is a price theorem also basically this is defined by the or the the name it's come for the thomas bias because this theorem was described by for the probability for the event through the thomas bias so we use this particular bias theorem so because that person was the one who described this particular theorem we gave the name bias theorem the so basically if you take a example which particular things we are using this this is use of to take the problems to find out increments the things the ages the risk is so for that particular purpose we use this bios theorem into the picture and that particular time only this bios theorems comes in our mind to use this theorem particular way on that so if you think about the applications because many applications we use to provide through the bios theorem there is a variety of operation what we use is like your binis interfaces or inferences then statistical inferences and then if you go with the degree of beliefs then you have account things the abilities those particular application we use already in a bias theorem now the main things comes to our mind that is our the main this is the formula of your or the statement of your theorem that is p a slash b equals to p b slash a p of a p of b so you can take as a like a and b at the event remember that where in this particular area is your first event this is your first event okay and this is your second event b is your second event and here whenever your a and b is a two event p of b probability p of b means probability of b not equal to zero so this three thing thus before starting with the theorem we should keep in the mind a and b is a event and p of b means probability of b is a not equal to zero then come to the one by one the understanding all this thing so first thing is p of a b is a conditional probability so this is the probability event a is occurring giving to the b is true so whenever a is occurring the b should be true it's called a posterior probability a is given b so this is called your posterior probability so the first statement this is the first statement that your state for like if you want to use that the particular statement so basically this is used for that particular area so whenever you use this like this is the first one right so this is also your event this is also your event e v e and t this is your events this is two are even and whenever we use this particular formula like whenever you use this particular formula keep the main thing in mind p of b your p of b this is your b right so p of b not equal to zero that is a compulsory thing we need to follow whenever we go with a formula so p of b is not equal to zero here so this two the first one it will be your statement where we call it's like as a posterior probability a is a given to the b now move to the second one that is p of b and p of a and p b so just understand the first thing p of b a like this one i'm talking about your this particular area p of b slash a so it's also conditional probability it's also known as a conditional probability how this is a conditional probability okay so we call 
this two will be the conditional probability this one and this one will be your conditional i just give you the short form c dot p conditional probability we call this two is a conditional probability and it is also like b occurring to a here what happened a occurring to b here b occurring to a here what happened when a occurring to b b will be true here b occurring to a so a will be true the same thing just a reverse a perspective it is happen now comes to pa and pb this two will be used for probability for observing this two pa and pb this two is for the observing purpose so i just give you the short form for observing o so observing purpose a and b respectively without any condition they are known as your marginal or prior probability a b must be in different events remember that this two will be for that particular purpose like observing purpose but both are for the different purpose so this is how we need to use all this bios theorem so bios theorem will follow this rule that is a important thing for the bios theorem whenever we use this bios theorem it will be following this type of things and with the help of this bios theorem what happened so whatever the things you are getting is the accuracy is your specific timing or your all the test we can use this thing to prevent our testers later days when you need to go with the test your things your example you can follow it with this particular formula you can provide the things to that we'll get a proper result on that with the help of this to the analysis so this is one of the way we use the analysis things on that i hope you are clear with the things of the bios theorem so for the next session we'll be seeing on the another theorem with the another things where we understand how the things will be analysis with the help of the theorem to get, get the proper values or to get the proper accuracy level and the correct values on that thank you